How many know the word of the Lord is still the word of the Lord? And even if no, the enemy just try to frustrate you with something. It's like, okay, it was working just fine, and then all of a sudden it just decided to, to not work. So I'm not sure what happened there, but it's okay. And uh, it's funny, my wife put that pressure on me, like, oh, he's going to preach this morning. It's coming with fire. I was like, what? <laughs> okay, boy, just put the video. How many of us don't wish for you? That's nothing to do. Uh, with me at all. I just try to be the vessel that he uh, wants to use this morning. And, uh, that's that's the number one thing. God, when God, when the anointing is there, then we just go with what he wants to do. So we're going to pray. Well, first, I'm going to do the church one in the week, and then we will pray. Amen. Well, anyway, this is called uh, Share and Share Alike. It says that a local burger king, an elderly couple came in and ordered one burger, one order of fries, and one Coke with two glasses. When they got to their booth, the man placed a napkin in front of himself and one in front of his wife, then proceeded to divide the fries, cut the burger in half, and divide the Coke equally. A gentleman nearby noticed and offered to buy them another burger, fries, and a Coke. The woman then said, no, you don't understand. We've been married over 50 years, and all our life we agreed to split everything right down in the middle. Her husband then began eating. As she sat with her hands in her lap, the gentleman nearby noticed uh, and asked the lady why she wasn't eating. She replied, as I said before, we split everything right down the middle, and it's his day to use the tea first. <laughs> Amen. How many of you know God is good? Amen. Even with malfunctions and all that. But let's pray. Let's get in the Word, and let's see what God has to say to us today. So, Heavenly Father, we just come, we humble ourselves before you, and Lord, we just thank you for the privilege, the honor, and just the distinction to be called children of God. But I pray everyone in this room realizes they've been bought with a price, that they've been bought with the love of God that was shed at the cross, his blood shed at the cross. God wanted you and I. He wanted us as his children. You are wanted this morning. God laid down his life through Jesus Christ so that you could be a child of God and to take away the sin debt that kept us from him and him from us. See the loving arms of Jesus. Look into his face right now and tell him, thank you for wanting me. You've been adopted by your heavenly Father through the blood of Jesus. And not only that, but you have the spirit of adoption by the Holy Spirit that's been given to you. Think about it. God himself in the person of the Holy Spirit has been given a gift that lived inside of you all the days of your life since you were born again. The Holy Spirit loves being with you. The Holy Spirit has pleasure living inside of you because you're a temple where he dwells. And not only does he live there, he empowers us. He leads us. He guides us. He leads us into all truth because he's the spirit of truth. He's a comforter. He's a helper. If you feel helpless this morning, you feel comfortless, you don't feel up, let me tell you, his love is shared abroad in your heart right now by his very presence. His ministry of righteousness is working in you and through you right now. And his working of transformation to transform you and I into the likeness of Christ. God's desire is that you and I resemble Jesus Christ in every way. He is the epitome of humankind. He wants every human being to be born again. To become part of this new race of people called believers. Do you not realize you belong to a new race? You're a new nation of people yes, yes. called God's people. Yes. You have superseded all other identities in the earth. Yes. And we're now the people of God. Amen. I don't care what your family situation, maybe you have a great family in the natural, maybe you don't have a great family in the natural, but guess what? In Jesus Christ, you have a new family. And then one day we're going to live together in eternity. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for the honor and the privilege of doing that so we can be your children. 
Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Tell somebody in your name, you know, you're a child of God. Huh. That's a pretty powerful thing to be a child of God. I think we kind of take that for granted sometimes that we're children of God, you know. You know, the enemy will get you to this place where you say, oh, woe is me, you know, I'm no good, I'm whatever and whatever. No, nope. God says you're beautiful, you're wonderful, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. How many are you ready for the word this morning? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we are going to talk about wars and the kingdom of God. I had this nice slide and now, you know, malfunction, whatever. You know, just, it's okay. How many of you know it's the word, one of the pictures? So just picture this in your mind and just hear. But one of the things I want to quickly talk about. Somebody probably be asking, what is happening? What is happening in the earth right now? What's happening particularly that's going on in, in uh, the country of Ukraine? Uh, I wanted to just tell you this real quick. And again, I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about this a little bit because we have to be a little careful when major events happen across the planet and everybody gets a little nervous. Everybody gets a little shaky. Some people, you know, start wetting their appetites. Oh, yeah. Things, you know, prophecy going down. You know, we got to be real careful. So, again, I, I do want to read this to you. I mean, I read all of it. Again, I don't have that uh, because, again, the, the easy worship is whatever it is, this mail function. But I'm going to just read something to you. And I'm going to call this, this is just part of the message. But I call, I think, and I believe that uh, the invasion of Ukraine is a possible prelude by Russia uh, to eventually go into the land of Israel. There's a in Ezekiel 38, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog in the land of Magog, uh, the prince of Rosh. And if you were to read, if you were a student of the Bible, you realize this land is north of Israel. And pretty much many Bible scholars believe this is what we would call Russia today. And so it says, The prince of Rosh, uh, which they say translates maybe down to where we get Russia. Meshach and Tubal, and prophesied against him. And verse 3 says, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I have against you, O God, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, which today would be Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, these are northern, uh, what we call northern Africa, and all of them with shield and uh, helmet, Gomar and all its troops, the house of Gomar, from the north, I believe some scholars believe the area of Turkey, pretty much the Middle East, uh, from the far north and all its troops, many people are with you, and what he means with you is with this Prince of Rosh, Magog, this country, which would be Russia today. So prepare yourself and be ready. All you and your companies that are gathered against you may be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited, and it says here, in the latter years, or the latter end, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the nation of Israel, which had been long desolate. They were brought out of the nations. Now all of them dwell safely. You can read in any history book how this happened where uh, Israel was reborn in May 14, 1948, and uh, Jews across all the world came back to the land. A nation was reborn in the day. So it says that this after this period, in verse 10, thus said the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass, that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. Like I said, I believe this is like uh, Ukraine is like a prelude. You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take plunder and to take booty and to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited and against the people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba, Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, and all their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to God, thus said the Lord God, on that day when my people of Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. You will come against my people, Israel, like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days, or the, the end times, as we would call it, and that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me. 
when I am hollow in you, O God, before their eyes. Thus said the Lord God, Are you he of whom I have spoken in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them? And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken, surely that day will, there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things and creeps on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. Ooh. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against God throughout all my mountains, said the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother, and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And you say, well, Pastor, why, why did you read that? Because it's clear and obvious, okay, this nation that stood in order, if you, uh, again, being a Bible student study, when you see, uh, when it gives directions in the Bible, it's basing that on the nation or the land of Israel. So this great country to the north would be what we would call Russia. So at some time, at some point, uh, this nation, Russia, as it be, I, I won't say it's now. I just want to be very careful about it as we talk about uh, the wars in the kingdom of God. But this, some people call it, this is World War III, where nations are going to be involved. He's bringing this company of people. And one of the things that's key to about all these nations is, uh, besides the Russian armies, that most of the ones that are gathered with him, one of the common things is that they're, they're Muslim. And that's not to say anything against the Muslim, just saying that's what it is. And so that's one of the common things. But what I was saying about this, why I read this, because what we may be seeing, what may possibly be taking happen in there in Ukraine, this is a prelude to what the nation uh, of Russia or the country of Russia will eventually do one day when it comes into mind to come against the land of Israel. Amen? So we could be seeing a formation of that right now. And all I'm going to say is this, don't get panicky. Don't bite your nails or anything like that. Pray. Amen. That's the number one thing. Ukraine needs our prayers. Yeah. Because let me tell you something. Irregardless of whether it's Putin that does this eventually against the land of Israel, one thing we know is this, that the nation of Russia, country of Russia, whatever you want to call it, whoever sits in that seat, is eventually, that is going to come into their mind to invade Israel. So we may be seeing that spirit as an entity there that is wanting to do that, and this could be a practice, my wife doesn't like me to say this, but a practice run on Ukraine. The reason I want to use practice because we're talking about people and their lives being destroyed. But let me say this, Putin is an international terrorist. He's a killer, he's a destroyer, he's a dictator, he's a despot, he's an antichrist, he's a lawless one. Uh, he may not be the one predicted that we just read, the Prince of Ross, but he certainly, if nothing else, is helping work towards what we just read. At least the pieces of the parts are coming, because he's trying to reform that communist country as it was. He wants to be this great czar. He wants to go down in history, and I'm telling you, that's nothing but a devil that's behind him. Let's just put it in its place and call it what it is. And I'm going to say this, no follower of Jesus Christ not even a true American, saved or unsaved, should even slightly support, compliment, or justify his action. People's lives are being destroyed right now. You can, don't tell me and any, there's nothing at all to celebrate over this evil man. And Jesus said, we'll know stuff by its fruit anyway. Let me say this. John 10.10 10 says, the thief come, does not come except to steal to kill and destroy. And he said, I've come to get life. So let me ask you this. If you just had to ask him, so what is Putin exhibiting? He's a stealer, he's a killer, and he's a destroyer. And we need to pray for his demise. I pray for the first demise he gets saved. That's what my first. But you know what? If you don't want to yield to Jesus, then you know what? Off the planet, brother. Amen? Because he's going to continue in this way. Because there's a demonic spirit 
behind it. The Bible says the spirit of Antichrist is in the earth. He may not be the Antichrist, but he's definitely one of them. Amen? Now listen to this. The, the, here we can pray this. The Revelation 13, 10 says, He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword, this actually means, the Greek word means war. The sword that means war. Must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saint. Now you say, why did the Lord put that in the end? Because what he said is, whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap. That's what that means. If you sow war, you're going to reap it. If you sow kill it, steal it, destroy it, that's what's going to come back to you. I say, Pastor Ray, you saying that's what's going to happen to Putin? I'm just going by the word. I didn't write this. And then Jesus says in Matthew 26, 52, listen, Remember when they came to get Jesus? Peter being the prison warrior that he was going to be. I'm going to stand and fight for Christ. He pulls out his sword and he reaches at Malchus. And he wasn't going for Malchus's ear. There was a head shot. Peter missed. But listen to what Jesus says. Put your sword in its place. For all. Everybody said all. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Jesus said that. I did. Let that sink in. Whatever we sow, that's what we're going to reap. By the way, I found some interesting news. I don't know if anybody knew this. I'm just going to uh, share this with you because I'm not going to add something that's not there. But I thought it was interesting that the president of Ukraine is Jewish. He was born to Jewish parents. He was born January 25th, 1978. Folks, he's Jewish. I'm not going to add any more to that, but the irony of that, take it for what it's not. I thought that was interesting, that he's Jewish. And here we have this Russian leader coming against his country. I thought that was kind of interesting. But anyway, moving on. So the next question may happen, you're asking, so, so what is happening? But the next question would probably is, what's going to happen? Anybody been asking, well, what's going to happen? What's going to happen with this? Now, I'm going to settle in to listen in Matthew 24, because a lot of you have been putting it out there, so I might as well go there, too. How many know that we as ministers, pastors, Christians, we cannot avoid when events like this take place? We just can't say, well, it has nothing to do with me. I'm over here in America. It don't mean anything to me. World, that's what many people in World War II thought, and they were dragged into a war. I'm not saying this is going to turn into World War III. It could. But we can't leave, we can't just put our heads in the ground like an ostrich and say, Man, that has nothing to do with me. People should matter to us. People. People's lives have been turned upside down over Ukraine. And we, as, we as believers should have compassion for them and those surrounding areas. But listen to Matthew 24. I'm going to read 3 through 14. And see what you get just from me reading this. And the disciples had come to Jesus, you know, and they said, you know, when will be the sign of your coming and all the end of the age? And I'm going to start at verse 3 now. He said, now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, said, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? And Jesus answered said to me, take heed that no one deceives you. you. Kind of found that interesting that Jesus doesn't begin with, hey, let me tell you what's going to happen. The first thing he said, don't you be deceived. Let me say right now, listen, body of Christ, people in this room, the first thing you need to be praying is that you're not deceived. Amen? For many, verse 5, many will come in my name, say, I am the Christ, and will deceive a few. A little bit. No, what does it say? Many. Make sure you're not part of the many. For many, it said, and you will hear, now here we come, verse 6, and you will hear of wars, and rumors of war. Is it safe to say? And somebody might say, well, the war's been going all over the time. Right. And we'll talk about that. You will hear of wars and rumors of war. And notice, this is what I want everybody to hear about what he, Jesus says then. Because if you hear of wars and rumors of war, the first thing you start is start getting nervous and scared. But this is what Jesus said. See that you're not troubled. Because what he would say his name. For all these things must come to pass. Turn to somebody and say, this must come to pass. Say it like you mean it. This must come to pass. And tell them, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. 
from heaven. And Jesus, the Son of the living God, who knows all things, said, don't be troubled. This has got to happen. But he said, but the end is not yet. For verse 7, for nation will rise against nation. It's been going on even since Jesus spoke this. And kingdom against kingdom. This thing has always happened. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. When I come back, see that you're not troubled. This is going to happen. Verse 8, for all these are the beginning of sorrows. And then he tells the disciples, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. I nobody, nobody wants to read this. You mean martyrdom? Yes. At some point, sometimes, by the way, Christians are being martyred and killed every day. It's part of what comes with being a I know no, I don't want to hear this. But it comes with being a believer. It could happen, but it don't happen, but it could. You'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. I always thought that was entered by all nations. Everybody said all. all. Did you know all nations would even include America? You can be hated in America for being a Christian. I thought that was only in foreign countries. Because you know America is a Christian nation. What? Wait a minute. It says, by all nations for my name's sake. That's a whole other message. And then many will be offended. And will betray one another. And will hate one another. Why? Because of who you serve. Listen to this. We talk about the deception. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive just a few people. A little bit. A smidgen. No. We'll deceive how many? Many. Tell somebody, make sure you're not part of the many. And because lawlessness or crime will abound. Some of you sitting there going, no, that's happening right now. Thank you. The love of many will grow cold. What they say? The amount of crime and lawlessness and killing and stealing is, is going to make some people's love grow cold. Like they can't handle it. But he who, verse 13, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And verse 14, we're talking about wars and the gospel of the, and the, and the kingdom. Wars in the kingdom. And this gospel of the kingdom might be preached. Oh, I get, okay, y'all got a different Bible than that. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to what? All nations. Then the end will come. When that happens. Now I'm going to read Luke 21, 7 through 11. This is kind of, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, the, the Luke wrote his version of that when he sat down with Jesus. And he says, this is 7 through 11, 21, 7 through 11. says, so they asked him, teacher, when will these things be? What will be the sign? There will be when things are about to take place. He said, take heed that you're not deceived. For many will come in my name. I am he. The time is drawn near. Therefore, do not go after them. Meaning, don't run after people saying, I'm the Christ or I'm the deliverer, I'm the Savior. But when you hear wars and commotion, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass. But the end will not come immediately. It will take some time. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines, and pestilence. And there will be fearful sights. It's an addition that look at. There will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Meaning the atmosphere, this thing's going to, I don't know if it's going to be uh, meteors or whatever. Some people say UFOs or I don't know. But there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. And what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to get scared? Are we supposed to get nervous, go hide? No. What are we supposed to do? He's going to tell us in just a minute. In, in 21, 25, and 28, he said there will be signs in the sun. Wow. In the moon and the stars. Now listen to this, y'all. And on earth, distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. Listen, verse 26, men's hearts failing them from fear. Please don't fear. And expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. I'll look this up. But you know the expectation of things coming? That's the belief that something's going to happen even though it may not. You, get, you and I can get ourselves in such fear of something we think is going to happen. That's why you've got to be careful not to be deceived. Mm -hmm. 
on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. They, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And verse 28 and here says, here's where we should be right now with everything that's going on. Now when these things begin to happen, get down depressed, go hide, stop praying, build a bunker, stock up food. Not that you should do those things. Run. Go to the mountains. No, it's like when these things begin to happen, look up. Lift up your heads. Because your redemption draws near. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I know exactly all that study prophecy, you know, eschatology for years and everything. And uh, I, I have made my own mistakes with this. I'm very careful not to say this is absolutely going to happen. This is going to happen on this day. But I can say this. As each day passes, we draw one day closer to his coming. Amen. Amen. The old people used to say, uh, uh, how did they say it, Delphine? Uh, I, I just meant that just left me right Shh. But we're nearer than we were before. Amen. Amen. But here's what I tell you. Going back to verse 6. He says, for all these things must come to pass. The Lord is likely saying that each event. Everybody say each event. Each event. Each event like what is going on now in the Ukraine and what Russia is doing. It must happen. Mm -hmm. To bring about the events of the latter days. I don't know about you, I think it was Bill Hammond that said, man, I've been excited, looking forward to these times. <laughs> now, here's the question, are you? Because what we just read, Jesus said, lift up your head, look up, lift up your head. And you and I should have like this big grin on our face, like, what, well, what? Because Jesus is getting ready to come. Okay, y'all are just not excited about it. <laughs> let me find, let me talk to the angels. Maybe they, you know, they, they, angel, what do you think? Are you excited about Jesus? Yeah, he said, yeah. Christians, I am here about the book of Revelation. I get so scared. The Antichrist. By the way, if you read that, if the book of Revelation, the, the devil was not even really winning in the book of Revelation. By the way, he get he gets three and a half years. That's it. That's it. Everybody's talking about the one world government that's coming, and you know we're going to have you know the, you know the mark of the beast, and you know God, the devil's taking over. Folks, three and a half years. If you can endure, if you go through the tribulation, hopefully nobody in this room. But if you do, you just got to hold out for three and a half years. That'll be hell to pay. But I'm just telling you. <laughs> But be careful not to be deceived. Amen. This is what the Lord told me in prayer today. Don't jump. Do not be given to fear. He said, what do you mean don't jump? Because let me tell you, listen, folks. And that's why I don't want to do this either. There are even preachers, ministers, teachers of the gospel that are trying to take advantage of you right now. They're going to start saying things. Because if you're scared and afraid and not communing with the Holy Spirit and getting to the Word, you'll start believing a whole bunch of malarkey, and the next thing you know, you you buying a bunker and 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 uh, buying a tank or something. I don't know. And putting out books that are unscriptural, full of error, and that, that next thing you know, you got a corner filled up with books on the end time that go with the other corner of books on the end time that you bought 10 years ago, that you bought 20 years ago, that 30 years ago, that none of that stuff's come to pass. Don't jump. Unfortunately, when events like this take place nationally and internationally, we can become very vulnerable, anxious, fearful, and extremely susceptible to deception. Even within the body of Christ. I pray no ministers do that, take advantage of that, because I'm certainly not going to do it. I'm not going to stand here and say this and that is going to happen when I don't know. But I know things, like my wife was saying, things are aligning, things are shifting. Yeah. We as God's people must be careful and wise, and especially teachers of the word, preachers. I'm saying that any preachers watching it, any preachers in the room, listen. Do not declare certain things you do not know. Don't say it publicly. Don't say it to the populace. Just say it could be. It might be. I don't know. And that's the, the, the stance I'm going to take right now. Because you don't need to be deceived. You need to pray. 
Well, Pastor, when is this going to happen? I got a word for you. I don't know. <laughs> is Jesus coming tomorrow? No, I can't say that. No, because there's certain things that have to line up first. Let me tell you something. There's a lot more things that have to come together for this to come to, to pass. So we're asking, you know, what's going on? What's going to happen? But here's what we don't know. We don't know when these things are exactly going to take place, who the parts are going to be. I mean, we got people running around believing that Antichrist is on the earth. I don't know. And if he is on the earth, the Bible says he cannot re be revealed to his time. So when people are naming, oh, I think it's the king of Spain. And you know what? You know, it might be this guy, the guy, or the Russian, maybe Putin. Let me tell you something. The Antichrist, I can't say this, it's not Putin. He's a bad guy, but he's not the Antichrist. Why? He cannot be re revealed into his time. And that which is taken, that's supposed to be taken out of the way, is taken out of the way. And I believe that's the church. I believe we've got to be raptured out of here before that happens. Somebody say, Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> so even with the Word of God, listen, even with the Word of God, we only know in part, we only get portions. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 10 said, Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. And by the way, that doesn't mean that tongues left. It just means they will be ceasing because it's going to lead up to why they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But, everybody say but. but. Man, there's some good buts in the Bible. Here's a good but. But when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part will be done away. In other words, what he's saying is this. We won't need tongues. We won't, they will not need any more prophecy. When Jesus comes, it will be all fulfilled. There will be no real need for it. We'll have all knowledge because we will be as he is, knowing all things. We don't need to pray in tongues because we will have his glory. For those who misteach that part right there. Or you know, the tongues went out with the, with the, with the prophets and the apostle Paul, when he died, they left. You mean all the tongues was in Paul? Why did somebody tell Paul, why are you teaching on the gifts of the Spirit when they're going to go with you? They should have kept him alive, propped him up, but that was the case. You mean the fullness of the gifts of the Spirit are always in Paul? No. Now let me say this. Only the Spirit can truly lead and guide us into all truth. Has anybody prayed, Holy Spirit, you're the Spirit of truth. What's going on right now? Make that your prayer. Because Jesus said, listen, and, uh, John, we talked about over the last few weeks, John 16, 13. How many of you actually believe the word of God? Raise your hand if you really believe God's word. Okay. Now listen to what he says. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, what's he going to do? He will guide you into all truth. I believe that. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Isn't that a comforting word? He will tell you things to come. So wait a minute, Holy Spirit. Hey, what's going on over in Europe right now? What's going on? Do you not think the Holy Spirit would tell you? The Holy Spirit is the capital T-H-E prophet in the church and the kingdom of God. And guess what? In you. Do you realize you have the prophet of God living inside? Oh, I gotta go see, you know, Prophet John and, and you know, Prophet Kurt and you know, Prophet Rod. And I gotta see them. I just can't trust the Holy Spirit. You kidding me? Where do you think we get prophecy from? From the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is right. If you ask Him, fellowship with Him, Jesus said, He'll show you things to come. He'll tell us. Jesus told us these things in order to properly prepare. That's why I said not to become fearful and afraid. Now, I'm just going to run through these. Give me some time. I don't know why we try to hurry up out of church. Where are we going? <laughs> a turkey is still going to be a turkey. The restaurants are still open. They have lengthy hours. He said you will hear wars and rumors of war. Now, if we talk about specifically Ukraine, I'm talking about, talk about, give me this moment, these nine, th th yes, nine things from uh, Matthew 24, that verse we read. It says, wars have been going on since the beginning of mankind. So I don't want to hype this up. Don't let it at the same time. Don't want to play it down either. I believe prophecy is being fulfilled. I cannot tell you specifically what is being fulfilled. But we must be in tune with the Holy Spirit and get God's guidance 
That's a child of God that rightly divide the word when it comes to these things. To get understanding and to gain insight, revelation, knowledge, and understanding so that we might know what time it is on the planet. Amen? So we don't want to disregard what Jesus said when he said, these things must be. That doesn't mean we don't pray. We don't just say, well, just let them have your claim. No, we come against evil in the name of Jesus. We have been given the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and we should bind any evil that's going on right now. Let me tell you something. Prayer has been going on. Have you noticed this has gotten the saints of God stirred up? See, God knows what's going on. God knows what will push our buttons to pray. God keep pushing buttons. Second thing, nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Even warring among, you know, I hate to even have to say this, y'all. There's even warring going on among believers in the kingdom of God right now. And particularly more so in America. America is divided against itself. Politically, socially, racially, culturally, economically. That even believers are caught up in it. And being seduced, and one of the biggest seductions is distraction. There's a part of me who wants to say, thank God this is happening to Ukraine, because guess what? We threw off the fluff and started praying. Our priorities changed when we saw evil manifesting as it did with Russia doing it, and the saints said, you know, I can't worry about that right now, I've got to pray for Ukraine. But let me tell you something, we've got to deal with division. Because Matthew 12, 25, Jesus said, you know, a lot of believers just want to ignore this scripture. I don't know why. But Jesus said he knew their thoughts and said that every kingdom, it didn't say some, what did he say? Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation or destruction. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. And guess what it doesn't say there? Except in America. We think we're impervious to that. The, even Christians, we think we're impervious to the fulfillment of this. The kingdom of God, the people of God, the church in America is a nation within itself. And if we're divided against itself, it can come to desolation in this nation. You say amen or me? Even when our country is divided... And this principle can still work and will take place itself. Unity come to us. And you know what our nation needs to see for unity to come back? It's unity in the body of Christ. Amen. So as the church goes, so goes the nation. My Lord, my Lord. Jesus said, when we have love to one another, then people will know we're his disciples. I just can't love, you know, Brother Al. I mean, I don't like him. Wait a minute, he followed Jesus too. What are we, what are we talking about? You don't believe, you know, he's Baptist, he's Presbyterian, he's charismatic, I just can't fellowship with him. What are we talking about? We wouldn't have those things if it wasn't for Jesus. We're just a different brand of his people. Don't put down the brand. Love our brothers and sisters. Amen? There's not a lot of amen on that. What's, what's going on? I can't go to the church because it's dead. Maybe you need some dead a little bit just to see, thank God for what you got. <laughs> Jesus said to be famines, pestilences. Can I give you a wake up call this night? Listen, COVID 19 is a pestilence. I think, I, I think somebody made it in a lab. Even if they did, it's still a pestilence. I think it was a monkey. A bird, a bat. What are we talking about? Irregardless of where, how it came about, it's hurting people's lives. It's destroying livelihoods. What are we supposed to do? Pray. Amen. Not discuss where it came from. Pray. It's the believers of God pray and get insight. But pray. Number four, offense, betrayal. And hatred. These are things that shouldn't be named among believers, but Jesus said these things are going to happen. It can happen in the camp of God because it's already happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Saturday. Number five thing he said in there, many false prophets will rise and deceive many. Some will even use, I said this before, I said it again, please listen. Some will use the events that are going on right now to cause fear and turn people to themselves. Preachers, teachers, and ministers of the gospel should, of the gospel should not be instilling fear due to these events. But rather faith and hope and preparation according to God's word. His will and His ways. Let me tell you something. If it doesn't move you more towards faith and hope and trust, lifting up your hands and you're in fear, you're scared, and you're talking to people and they feel like they almost have to slap you, guess what? It's not the Holy Spirit. Now, I won't slap you in the natural, but in my mind, I might hear, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Like I said, I physically want to but you know, like in my mind, I might imagine it. But sadly, what can come out of this? It's happened before. There will be much proper lying, wrongly dividing of the word, hype, and overzealous spirituality that will take place and lead many astray. Turn to somebody and say, Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Whoa! For the people of life. Number six, lawlessness will abound. I kind of touched on this, but this goes without saying. And, I, and because we don't know where we are on the time clock, there's two parts of this that I'm concerned about. One, if this isn't the worst it could be right now, I don't even want to imagine how worse it could get. With the crimes, the things you read in the newspaper, if you just click on the news right now, you hear some of the most horrific things. My thought is, my God, can this get worse? But guess what? We have an answer called prayer. Yeah. Y'all said that like, yeah. No, yes. We have prayer. Whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Do you believe you have authority? 2 Timothy 3.18 says, But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. Now, you really need to pay attention to what that scripture says. But evil men and imposters. Anybody know what an imposter is? An imposter is a faker. They pretend a wolf and sheep's clothing. They pretend to be one thing and they're actually something else. And let me tell you something. There are a lot of imposters out there. Posing as one thing to fool people. And the Bible says they're going to grow worse and worse. Jesus said they're going to grow worse and worse. And what's scary about this is they deceive themselves while they deceive others. They believe their own press. Now that's scary. They believe their own lies. Let me say that one more time. They believe their own lies and deceive people with the lies they're telling that people believe. Holy Spirit help. help. Number seven in that group, the love of many will grow whole cold. Let me tell you something, that makes my heart hurt. Because you said, was well, that believers? Let me check. What do you think God's talking to in this passage? What do you think he's talking to all of mankind, but he's talking to his disciples in this one. He said the love of many will grow cold. That means believers' love can grow cold. The love of God can grow cold inside of us. Don't let it happen to you. Let me say, Jesus is telling these things to prepare us. Another eight. At number eight point, he said, the need for endurance to begin. Let me tell you something. You and I need to latch on to the Holy Spirit like Jacob held on to that angel and pray for endurance. Because the Bible says, I think it's in the book of Daniel, it says the enemy tries to wear down the patience of the saints. Don't let your patience be worn down. Let me tell you something. That's why my wife is exhorting at this time we don't need to stay away from the house of God. I know events and stuff happen. There's COVID out there, but let me tell you something. There's a devil out there too. Amen. 
And he is trying to orchestrate things to keep us apart. We need each other as the believers. Let me tell you something. Even as a pastor and a leader, you know what even helps me? Let me tell you something. I, I, I mean, let me tell you, I don't need this, but I like it. It helps me when I see your faces. Amen. And let me tell you something. That doesn't work for me. It works for you. Amen. Dangerous is when we become isolated. Amen. Amen. Isolation is deadly. We need each other, so don't forsake your sibling as we see these evil days approach us. Yeah. But here's what I like it is. When all of this is going on, I like the way Jesus drops this saying. This gospel, everybody say this gospel. This gospel. Will be preached. This gospel, this good news of Jesus Christ. In his coming kingdom, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ruling, reign, coming, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And here's the thing about it. Guess who gets to do it? Amen. It's us. Not the angels. Not the guy across the street. You. Yes. He said this gospel will be preached. In all the world. So guess what? This is the greatest thing that can happen in the end time. Is that we get to preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. You mean with all this evil going on? With all the deception? With all the, uh, you know, the, the people's love growing cold? Absolutely. Because Jesus said. He said it right here. This gospel will be preached when all this is going on. So guess what? Make yourself a candidate to say, you know what? I'm going to be right in this. Because guess what? Here's what the Lord gave me. If you do this, it'll keep you from being deceived. If you do this, it'll keep your love from growing cold. If you do this, you won't have to worry about imposters and lawlessness. And then, you know, first comes the worst. Well, guess this. There was a brother, they told this story. A man was out preaching the gospel and got killed. Now, some of us, oh my God, he was doing God's work and got killed? That happens. I, I know we don't want to hear it, but it happens. But you know what? If, if you're going to get, then you say, no, that's right. Now. Thank you, Terry. Because Jesus said there's great honor in dying for the name of Jesus. Well, I don't know about that. Lord, I was hoping to stay around to the rapture. I didn't want to die at all. But let me tell you something, that brother. It's sad that he lost you know, his he left a wife and kid. But I guarantee you, not for one second, when he reached glory, did he say, I want to go back. He probably said, Lord, I know you got to take care of my family. But he could walk into the gates of heaven knowing that he was standing up for Jesus when he died. And these things, they have to take place. So here's the question. Just give me a few minutes. Y'all can hang on. You know, like I said, the restaurant is still open. But they, you know, they'll be there. If you got a, you got a crock pot going on, they'll be again. Hope you got it on low. As these things take place, here's the question, the question. Everybody said, the question. What should the church, the nation, the kingdom of God and earth be doing while this is going on, while these things come to pass? We as the people of God should be as the sons of Issachar. First Chronicles 12, 12, 32 says, the sons of Issachar, who have understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. Wow. As a believer in Jesus Christ, yeah, we are better than the sons of Issachar. They were under the old covenant. We have the Holy Spirit living within us. So guess what? We can go and God, the Holy Spirit said, what, 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 should we, what should we be doing? Amen. What time is the Holy Spirit? Do you think the Holy Spirit is going to say, can't tell you? Not my job. Well, wait a minute. It says in John 16, you will show us things that come. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, okay, yeah, I got to. That's part of what the Holy Spirit is there for. To show us, to teach us, to lead us, to guide us. What should God's people be doing? The church. Jesus said we will be doing the gospel. We will be preaching the gospel. So go ahead and check that off and say, okay, here I am, candidate. For spreading the good news. Yes. Now I'm going to jump down. And I'm going to read. Well, let me read this. I, I, I'm not going to worry about time right now. We got. We got. We got. We got. We got to get ready. Second Peter three one through fourteen said, "Beloved, I'm going to write to you this second epistle, about which I stir 
up your pure minds by way of reminder. So you and I need to be stirred up and reminded. Turn to somebody and say, you need to be stirred up and reminded. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, now listen, this is, this is a helpful lesson teaching of, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Verse 5, for this they willfully forget that by the word of God, notice he said they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were old and earth standing out of water and in the word by which the world that then existed perished. Being flooded with water. But the heavens, verse 7, and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and of perdition. Now, no believer in this room should be getting scared. Now stop. Don't be getting nervous. Don't get scared. This is a triumphal moment for you. Perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. As, as some count slackness. In other words, he's not a human being. But he's long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. That what we consider a long time, God's waiting for people to be saved. He's waiting for us to preach the gospel for people to be saved. Amen. You see how they work together? Yeah. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In which the heavens will pass away. Whoa. With a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. I'm kind of hoping I'm not here when that happens. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved. And here it comes. What manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? God's done with this. I got to be hanged. Looking for. And hastening the coming of the day of God. Now this is what the Lord said right there. We're supposed to be excited about this. Yes. Yes. Oh Rod, right, you know, the heavens melting, the earth burning up. I don't know how to get excited about that. Yeah, you can't because you have a new body. Okay. Nevertheless, if we according to the promise, look for a new heaven. We look for a new heaven. We want it. And a new earth. I never said a new earth. New earth. In which Righteousness dwells. You know why that's in there? Because righteousness is not dwelling in the earth right now. But the day is coming. It's going to happen. Therefore, beloved, looking forward, this is what it says next. Looking forward to these things. That's the word of God. It's not the word of God. We're supposed to look forward to these things. These things are how Jesus said, these things must come to pass. Guess what? We're supposed to be mm, okay. This is a ripe season to preach the word of the gospel. Be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. That's a point, that should be a point of our prayer. Amen? Everybody say, I want to be spotless. I want to be blameless. Amen. Holy Spirit, help us. Now, in Matthew 24, 30 35, says, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender, it puts forth its leaves. Some scholars believe this is a prophetic about Israel. You know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, everybody say all these things. All these things. So what's happened in Ukraine, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, verse 34, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words by no means pass away. And what are we abiding in? His word. So guess what that means? You and I are not going to be destroyed or pass away. Now, I'm going to say this, um, and then I'm going to share one thing where we get out of here. We as the people of God must know and understand that the world and the nations we, that currently exist will eventually no longer exist. I'm going to let that sink in for it. Listen. The world that you and I are living in, not just the, the systems, uh, if you want to even call it the physical part of it, uh, however you want to frame that, even your livelihood is not going to continue to exist according to the Word of God. And I know this is going to hurt when I say this, listen. If, if Jesus, if we believe what Jesus said in the morning, he said, heaven and earth 
If I say Earth. Earth, okay. Earth. Earth is the planet, the big rock that we live on. He said that's going to pass away. We just read there's going to be new heavens and a new earth, right? Everybody got that? Stay with me here. Listen. There's going to be new heaven, new earth, right? So that means this has to pass away. So if the truth be told, I'm going to really sting some of us right now. Our allegiance, our pledge, and passion for our nations have no eternal value. Uh oh. They're passing away. It's going to be burned up. It's fleeting. Our primary focus and allegiance should be to the Lord. Amen. His kingdom and His word. Yes, yes. This is a check oil moment. Now you say, wait a minute. Let me just give you a picture of passing away or what you and I know. Again, that's, this is not a fear or scare moment. This is a learning moment to understand where our allegiance or priority should be. We just read that Jesus said, this gospel will be preached and all the world will be. So at some point in the future, believers are going to make the gospel the priority of their lives. Amen. Amen. Might as well start now. Okay. Now just this picture stuff passing away, things not being as they were. Let's say you were in Ukraine right now. You're a Ukrainian citizen. Right now, the world that they knew just a few days ago doesn't exist anymore. Just like that. Snatched away from them. They had to leave homes, leave children, moms, jobs. Think about it. It all stopped in a matter of days. Passed away. And that's just in the natural. What does that mean? We can't hold on to that which is not eternal. Eternal. So I just want to give you that little picture. That may sound a little hard, but let me tell you something. God turning the heavens and the earth and making them new is a good thing. It's the best thing. Because what he said, he's going to bring righteousness. And I got news for you. Because of the word of God, because of Jesus, you and I are, we have his righteousness. Somebody have a shout. The Lord is our righteousness. And because of Jesus, we will get to exist in this new earth that will be filled with his righteousness. And it will be filled with those who have received Jesus as a Savior. Amen. Now, I'm going to close with this. Now, listen, because this kind of goes in line with what I'm sharing. I may, you know, follow this up a little bit. I, I think this is just where God wants to end. But, um. Some of you may not have been here when I had this dream. This was back, it's actually further back than I thought. It was actually back in February when I talked about our allegiance and where our priorities should be. This happened in February uh, the 22nd. This was a, it was kind of a night vision dream that I had. And it had multitudes of people bringing their nation's flags into the throne of God. This, yeah, it was a dream. In the dream, I saw what appeared to be the throne of God. I saw people from all nations, countries, races, and cultures there. I saw where all the people were carrying the flags of the nation and culture they represented while in the throne room. The people were waving these flags with great pride and joy. Then they began to move toward the throne to approach the Lord seated on his throne. And then it then appeared they had to enter a very large door. This was a, a large door that they had to go to. It's all these people. They had their nations, flags, culture, all of them. Uh, so they came to this door. As they tried to enter, there appeared what seemed to be a man dressed in white. He was large, a large, towering, figured man. I assume from what I could see in the in this dream that the man was not, somehow I knew it was not the Lord, but rather an angel. The angel then spoke to the people as they tried to go through this door. And this is what he said to them. You cannot enter here with those. He said you cannot come before the Lord carrying those. He was speaking of the flags they were carrying. Then when he said this, the people said back to him, 
why can't we bring these with us? We are very proud of these. They make us happy. They mean so much to us. The angel responded back to them by saying, you should know the scripture where the Lord said, no one can serve two masters. For either they will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. The dream ended at that point. I woke up and I was like, oh my God. What was most interesting after the dream ended, I was reminded of Revelation 7, 9 through 10. I don't know if I've got that in the list and we'll close it after I read this. Where it says, after these things, I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, not flags. And crying out with a loud voice, and salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Notice where their priority was. To the Lamb of God. To the Lord God who sits on the throne. The difference here that, that I wrote in the, when I wrote that in the Revelation passage that the multitude here were carrying palm branches, not their nation's flags. The praise was to the God who saved them. They came from these different cultures and races and backgrounds that God created Himself. But before the throne of God, before his presence, they had no value whatsoever. I feel like I'm a very proud American. But my allegiance to Jesus far supersedes of my nationality. My nationality my country. And here's what I want to say to you and I today. We belong to a far greater kingdom. Yes, yes. Heaven and earth are going to pass away. That includes the nations as we know it. Yes. Irregardless of what's going on on this planet, make sure your allegiance is to the King of Kings, yes. the Lord of Lords, the President of all Presidents. It's Because they're all going to bow to him one day. Amen. Amen. I don't care what throne it is. I don't care what name. Even the richest nation, most powerful nation in the world. That man, that woman, those leaders are all going to bow to Jesus. Yeah. And let me tell you something. When we're there, what their rulership as it was in the earth, we won't even care. God's going to ask them, did they do right or did they do wrong while they were in that office? And did they do it according to his will? I'm afraid a lot of leaders are not going to pass that test. The Lord said as we close today, that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to him. Let me think about that now. What we tend to highly esteem in this world, God says it stinks to him. So be careful what we value, what we lift up, what we exalt, and whether it be man or a place or a thing. Because it don't even come into the same category with our Lord and Savior. The governments of this world rest on him. Now, I mean, that's why I say this as we close today. Let's put Ukraine on the shoulders of Jesus. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell in it. Ukraine belongs to the Lord. I don't know if they're Christian or not. It don't matter. God's the creator. He don't like oppression. He doesn't like a destroyer. That's why we pray for him to take down this Antichrist. To take down this killer. And we have been given the keys of the kingdom of heaven to do battle in the spirit. We need to be warriors for Christ in the spirit. Put your knife up. Put your gun up and get to prayer and pray by the Holy Spirit to put down this despot, 
this dictator in the name of Jesus. There is no justification for evil in any way, form, or fashion causing families to be broken apart. Livelihoods destroyed because of his power-hungry nature. And we take authority right now. Start praying right now when we leave out of here. We take authority in the name of Jesus. We, can, we take the keys of the kingdom of heaven and unlock in the spirit of God. Lord, we loose angelic hosts to fight on behalf of Ukraine, O oh God. We come against this oppressor in the name of Jesus. We ask you to put him back in his place. In the name of Jesus. Let everything he thinks to do fail on every hand. Let weapons fail. Let machinery fail. Let their strategies fail. In the name of Jesus. Let every evil thought cause them to come to madness. They be thrown into derision. Let every missile fail. Every bullet miss its course. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit loose angels on your behalf and fight for the people of Ukraine and push back this evil who would think even if he took this nation, this country, he would soon think I'll take another. Nobody's safe when there's a spirit of Antichrist roaming. We curse everything he does in Jesus' name. Let him be thrown into derision. Lord, let his armies become sick and throw up and become viruses and diseases Come upon them. Let fear come upon them in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause the Ukrainian soldiers to fight valiantly, courageously with great might and will and power that comes from you right now. We pray in the name of you. Push them back. Let them fall on every hand. And Lord, my greatest prayer, whether it's Ukrainian or Russian, they see the glory of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Lord, manifest the, the greatest thing that they all need is Jesus. Yes, I pray the banner of Jesus be raised yes, Lord. among those people. Yes, Lord. Lord, we know these things must come to pass. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to stop us because we don't know exactly what must come to pass. We see evil raising up and trying to do its own. Lord, this is right in your face. This man is said, I'm my own God. I'll do what I want to. Nobody can stop me. Lord, that's right in your face. Lord, we ask you to clap your hands and push him back. In the name of Jesus. And any other nation with evil thoughts like this. Let them be corrected. Let them come under conviction. And stop. Holy Lord. Be the protector of Ukraine. Yes. And I pray, Lord, that their eyes be open to you. That with victory, they will give you the praise. They will give you the honor. Let them call up. Like, Lord, I know there's believers in Ukraine praying. There's believers around the world united right now as one people, one voice. I pray that through this, Lord, that believers all over the world that we come together. We don't see any differences anymore. That we're one people in Christ. We're a holy nation. A royal priesthood. And priests pray. And we're called to prayer. You said my house shall be known as a house of prayer. So you know what that means? We got a house of prayers and we need to pray. And we pray in the name of Jesus to find every evil entity that's working right now in that area in Ukraine. Lord, turn people to you out of this. That they would see your hand. They would see your love and grace and mercy. Lord, I pray your Russian children just quit. Give up. That they turn and say, what am I doing? These are my brothers, my sisters. They throw down the weapons right now. They just quit. Yeah. Stop. In Jesus name. Yes. I will not be ruled by a tyrant. And be ruled. By the Savior. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. Yes. That's what every nation needs. 
So Lord, we love you today. We thank you. And Lord, as we close, maybe we in this room are watching. We've got our own enemy in our own camp. But I will say to you right now, you've been given the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Take your keys like Moses took that staff. Stretch out. Believe God's word. I believe God's word. And pray against the enemy that's entered your house. Maybe your enemy is you. Look yourself into the mirror and say, in the name of Jesus, I'm not doing this stupidness. I'm not doing this craziness anymore. I put down drugs. I put down alcohol. I put down meanness. I put down hatred. I put it down in me in the name of Jesus. I take the keys of the kingdom of heaven and I burn my whole self against myself. And let the ruling spirit within me, the greater one that's in me, that he rules. That entity that's entered my house, entered my family, today is the day that it ends. I bind every unclean, foul spirit that would try to take hold of my family, my family members, my brothers, my sister, my mama, my daddy, my kids, my grandkids. No more in the name of Jesus. I come against you with the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. I take authority over my household. If nobody else stand, I'll be the patriarch, the matriarch in the spirit. I'll be a spiritual daddy to take authority. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Call that son back. Yes. Call that daughter back right yes, now. Lord. Come out of drugs and alcohol and foolishness and perversion in the name of Jesus. You have the authority of God to do it. Yes. Come out of adultery right now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. We come against mental illness, yes, Lord. anxiety, and fear right now in the name of Jesus. We pray the power of God be released yes, Lord. upon you. Peace. Thank you, Lord. That situation that you're worried about right now, I don't know what's going to happen down at my job. Put it in the hands of the Almighty God. Yes. The earth is the Lord's of the fullness. That he knows everything that's going on down there at the job. He knows what's going on. Give it to Him. You just heard that, I don't know why I'm saying this, somebody just heard, hey, the business might fold up. They may have to close up. I don't know if that's somebody in the room or somebody watching, but put that business in the hands of God. Man probably messed it up, but God can turn it around. Amen. That's your livelihood. You can tell God, God, what am I going to do? Either he's going to make things right or move you on to somewhere else, but God's going to take care of you. Amen. Amen. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Your marriage may not be what about you give it to God. Yeah. Quit screaming at that man. Quit screaming at that woman. Scream, cry out to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Say, God, heal the marriage. And by the way, I may be the problem. Change me. Yes. I'm looking at my wife. I'm looking at my husband. I think it's the kids, the dog. I don't know what it is. It's probably me. <laughs> Repent. Yes, Lord. Fix me, oh God. If I'd be a better husband, I'd probably get a better wife. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, we got to quit blaming. Look in the mirror and say, I messed up. Yes. But God's a healer. He's a fixer. Yes. You say, you're fearful and wonderfully made because I made you. Yes, Lord. God doesn't like you messed up. He said, can you just come to me? Yes. The Holy Spirit wants to transform you. Wants to heal you. Just wants to love on you. God said, if you just give me five minutes. I don't know why I'm saying this. Just that somebody in this room or somebody watching. God said, if you just start give me five minutes. Five minutes in my presence. You ain't got to say nothing. Just come say, here I am. What, what you, you know, I heard somebody say, what you want? <laughs> what you want with me, God? What? He said, I got you now. I got you now. As we close, tell him, get me. Yes, Lord. Tell, tell him, Lord, get, get to get you. Yes. Tell him, get, get me, Lord. Get, get not get you, get you. <laughs> Or maybe somebody do need to be here. I don't know. But tell me to get you. Yes. 
Get me right where I need it. Some of you right now, just pray. I know we're not getting out of here. Just, just pray. Just pray. Don't think about what's going on around the world, but it's just you. Let the Holy Spirit shine His light on you right now. That, I, there's some dealings going on right now. Dealings, dealings, dealings. God's speaking to somebody about their, their thought life. And I'm not talking about...